Hello everyone and welcome back to the SULS podcast. As always, thank you so much for joining me for another instalment of the show. I really hope you're doing well because assignment season is well and truly upon us now. So I hope you're managing okay with your schedule and your deadlines. And please feel free to drop me a message on LinkedIn or Facebook or even in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. Just let me know what assignments you have coming up and and how you're feeling about them generally because it is a really hectic time for law students. So I just want to try and assure as many people as possible, you know, don't panic. You will be absolutely fine. You're all absolute superstars, and I mean, you listen to this podcast, so you're clearly one very smart individual anyway. So for this episode, I am joined by SULS Honorary Vice President, Mr. Neil Brannigan, to discuss his time so far on the Diploma in Professional Legal Practice at the University of Strathclyde, and really just to pick his brains on how diploma is structured, how it compares to the LLB in terms of workload, and try to paint an overall picture of the course for anyone who's also looking to complete it after finishing their LLB. So if this is you, then this is probably one of the most beneficial episodes you will hear on the podcast. So get your pen and paper out, listen closely, and I hope you find it useful. Welcome to the Stirling University Law Society podcast, proudly sponsored by Ashurst Advance, creating client value through advanced thinking. Now, over to your host and Vice President, Jed France. Neil, welcome to the show. First of all, thank you for joining me today. It's good to have you back on the show. Obviously, you are somewhat of a regular for for Series 1, so it's great to have you back today. Before we jump into the episode itself, I always like to start off in Series 2 by asking how the guest is doing and how their summer was. So how was the, the few months over the summer period for you? Well, Jed, uh, pleasure to be back on the podcast. Um, excited, like you say, I was on series one, so it's, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see the the changes and how things have progressed. Yep. Um, my my summer was was very good. It was it was relaxing. Um, after fourth year, you're a bit uh, burnt out, so you could say, and um, with mm-hmm. the dissertation and such. So, I spent most of the summer doing sport. Uh, I've been doing lots of uh, indoor wall climbing and outdoor uh, trad climbing, mm-hmm. and apart from that, just kind of keeping up with the news and reading some books and mm. yeah just just looking after myself really for the summer that definitely sounds more productive than my summer neil my summer was spent <laughs> pretty much playing football manager just at a desk trying to chill out because like you say you know once you kind of get the university year finished you know it's different for me coming out of second year compared to you in fourth year but you still feel a little bit of burnout and you feel like you just want to mm-hmm. kind of relax a little bit and I suppose people relax in different ways and, and I know that you like your, your hill climbing and stuff like that so I suppose for you relaxing and taking some time off will involve the hill climbing and stuff like that so yeah it's good to hear how different people kind of spend their, their time off so obviously we're, you're here today to discuss the, the DPLP and you're at Strathclyde and things like that mm-hmm. but I think the best way to approach this episode is to kind of go back to the start. So let's just say, you know, you're, you're still at Stirling, you're kind of in your last few months on the, on the LLB at Stirling. What was the application process like for a diploma? Like, is it the same as the undergrad in terms of UCAS and stuff, or is it a different structure for the DPLP? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And it's something that kind of um, is, is very much on your mind throughout your university degree is, is how you're going to go into your diploma. Mm-hmm. And what I will first of all say is the last couple months of fourth year are hectic. Mm-hmm. Your dissertation is just starting to really take shape and suddenly it's gone from a period of, of six months to, you know, six weeks or even less than that. So it's it's an intense time of year. Mm-hmm. And the last thing you want to be doing is doing application forms, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, the idea is that the, the diploma application process is very short. Um, it you know might satisfy some people to know that it, it literally takes maybe maximum of a day you could probably do it in a few hours to do your whole diploma applications mm-hmm. all you need to do is you send to the law society of scotland mm-hmm. the list of diploma uh, universities that you want to go to and then you individually apply to those universities through their own websites mm-hmm. uh, and and those application forms aren't long you're, you're talking that it's you know name and address um, it's the courses that you've studied and maybe a little bit about yourself but it, it's really it does not take too long at all mm-hmm. uh, compared to UCAS which is a you know it's it's a long process yeah, let's just yeah. say that oh. <laughs> it's, it's much shorter than that and um, my, my advice though would be to go to as many open days as you can really mm-hmm. get a feel for the universities before you apply for them yeah 
yeah and see when it comes to you know you said you, you you get in touch with the law society of scotland and you kind of list what universities you want to apply to is there a limit on how many you can apply to or can you just pretty much put your name out to all of them yeah it's, it's interesting because they, they actually raised the number it used to be uh, i believe only two universities that you could apply to mm-hmm. um but now it's gone up to three and if you think about it, there's there's six providers in Scotland, mm-hmm. so you're able to apply to half of them. Right. Um, so you're you're you get quite a good coverage, and I think that if if you know generally the geographical area you want to be in, uh, I knew I wanted to be in the Central Belt. Mm-hmm. So immediately the only ones I wanted to apply to were Glasgow, Strath, Edinburgh. Those were the only ones that I had really any interest in. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a much easier process in that regard as well. Ah, uh-huh. and you mentioned there that you wanted to to stick in the central belt. So I suppose that leads us on nicely to where you find yourself now. You're studying mm-hmm. the DPLP at Strathclyde. So overall, how are you finding Glasgow? How much of it is a different experience to Stirling, and, and why did you choose Strathclyde in the first place? Uh, it's it's a it's a very different world. Yeah, uh, than Stirling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, dur- during my undergrad, I didn't I didn't stay in Stirling. I stayed out near Alloa, mm-hmm. uh, and in comparison to the city life. Uh, it's it's much different. Uh, I I was one of the people in the first couple of weeks who was you know standing at the pedestrian traffic lights waiting yeah. for them to go green, <laughs> um, <laughs> not wanting to cross the road before that. Um, but one one thing I will say about Glasgow is it, at least during the day it is still quite quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it does feel like COVID is still having an effect on on return to the office. So the the trains have been quite quiet. I've never had a problem. I think maybe later on at night it's getting a wee bit busier with with the nightlife opening up again. Yeah. But it, it, I think that compared to previous years, I'm I'm dealing with a much quieter Glasgow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is quite nice because I remember at Stirling there wasn't a whole lot of options for places to go and eat. You know, you were kind yeah. of either on campus or you had to travel into Stirling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I came into my class in the first week and I was like oh, where am I going to get my lunch? And then I looked outside and I was like, there's literally like, you know, 10 different, yeah. like, you know, fast food restaurants I can see mm-hmm. from the window. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's nice in that regard as well. Uh, and second part of the question, why did I choose to go to Strathclyde? Uh, really, it was it was the attraction of group work. Mm-hmm. Um, Strathclyde is, is very much focused on putting you into teams and getting you to work through real life problems in a real life setting just with your peers Mm -hmm. instead of with solicitors and it i would say if you do the diploma at strathclyde look at it as the first year of your traineeship um because it very much simulates that sort of environment and as well there are no exams and if you know me i absolutely hate exams i'm very (laughs) glad that they're not involved (laughs) yeah i think everyone must hate exams at some point surely right even even more so now after after having a taste of the online exams, which mm-hmm. in in my opinion were better. Yeah, I, I know not everyone agrees with me on that one, but in person timed exams are not fun in any way for me. Yeah, and I feel like as well with online exams, it kind of mimics more real life problems in terms of the mm-hmm. fact you know when you do an exam in person during normal times in a pre COVID world and probably in a post COVID world as well, you know you get a few hours and you've got to just pretty much write everything from memory whereas if you're working as a solicitor you know you've got time to go away look at resources find your information stuff like that so i feel like it's probably better from that standpoint whether Mm -hmm. or not we stick with an online structure kind of remains to be seen i suppose that's quite an interesting development to to keep an eye on so Mm -hmm. you mentioned there that that glasgow's quieter than usual i remember when i was doing my hnd at city of glasgow obviously it was in a pre-covid world and you know you mentioned the trains and stuff those trains were a nightmare especially if you're <laughs> going any time between like eight in the morning you know once you got to about half nine it would quieten down again but then again in the evening at like five to half six it was just pandemonium mm-hmm. and it was it was not fun so in terms of your structure on a diploma obviously mm-hmm. we're kind of at least in Stalin and in LLB and undergrads in general, I think it's more of a blended approach. Are you fully in person or do you have online classes as well? I, I believe it'll be quite similar to Stirling. It's it's very much a blended approach. Mm-hmm. So s- some of your classes will be entirely online. Mm-hmm. And f- for a lot of them, I don't think that's entirely a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, f- you know, I'm, I don't want to pick out individual courses, but for example, you know, private client I, I that's one of my online courses mm-hmm. and in, in all honesty I don't think that that's you know inhibited the learning in the class very much at all mm-hmm. uh, but then for example with with a course like civil litigation 
uh, or criminal litigation where you're actually um, supposed to stand up in front of the class and you know give submissions and you know do motions hearings and options hearings mm -hmm. uh, which is all really good fun uh, that's that's in person and mm -hmm. you know you can see why it would be because you don't get the same the same atmosphere if you're doing it via zoom it's it's just it doesn't mimic real life you know well in fact it maybe mimics real life under pandemic conditions yeah uh, but hopefully we're going to be moving away from that and it's not going to be yeah the norm but yeah it's it's very much still a lent a, sorry a, a blended a blended approach yeah um, but you are you are able to come into campus essentially whenever you like if you want to go to the library and things mm -hmm. and how are you finding the campus in general how does it compare to sterling well <laughs> i'm not asking you to pick favorites but you know how is it ranking there <laughs> Well, uh, I, I like my green spaces. Yeah. So, <laughs> Strathclyde is slap bang, uh, essentially St George Square, no. or or very much in George Square, and you know, it, it's different. It, you just sort of walk into like tower block buildings, and that's part of the university. Mm -hmm. Um, which in comparison to Stirling, where you have you know Cottrell and Pathfoot on either side of this very nice loch yeah <laughs> connected by a bridge mm -hmm. uh, it's a different sort of atmosphere yeah I suppose the, I've always kind of thought you know Strathclyde and, and Stirling are obviously very different in terms of their campuses as you say Stirling is very green surrounded by hills and it's all kind of in the same place whereas Strathclyde from my mm -hmm. understanding at least is kind of spread about the, the city of Glasgow is that fair to say? It, it's um it's spread about in, across maybe you know a couple of streets yeah it, it's not it's not quite as as big as some some campuses uh, -huh. uh it, you know you you're generally going to be in about two or three buildings which are all within about a two minute walk of each other mm -hmm. so yeah it, it, I, I think actually it's, it's sterling there was maybe more running between classes actually okay because the the distance between path and cultural is much bigger mm -hmm. than the distance between the buildings at strath yeah well that's good to know at least because for me i always thought it was a bit further away than that so in terms of the diploma what is like the overall structure yeah so in some ways there, there is there is similarities in the fact that uh, I, I believe this is how most courses work uh, your your first semester you'll do your core modules which the law society essentially say that you have to do on your diploma to get to get the qualification mm -hmm. and they generally kind of fall into like ethics and professional practice uh, business studies essentially finance uh, your criminal litigation civil litigation conveyancing and private client mm -hmm. and that that takes up the bulk of your your first semester and what I will say is the semesters are much shorter than mm. they are at undergrad. They're about two or three weeks shorter. Right. Uh, and since you don't have exams, you don't generally have a long exam period. At, at least at Strathclyde, you don't have that you know two or three week extra exam period, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then your second semester is where you do your choices. Right. And I, I don't know if there's much point in, in me telling you what the choices are. It's, it's Strath because they will vary across yeah. uh, un universities a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. But I think what you know most unis are trying to uh, look at is they're trying to keep up with with the the developing world, the developing legal industry, and the needs of clients. Mm -hmm. So you'll you'll be looking at you know a a lot of of especially business and finance sort of awareness things because commercial awareness is mm -hmm. is the like the talk of the town in terms of getting traineeships yeah so a lot of providers will be doing uh, specialist courses on you know commercial awareness generally but also innovation and technology mm -hmm. uh, just trying to get students aware of those issues when they're applying for for their traineeships yeah and you mentioned before as well that you know you don't have any exams so how are you assessed is it pretty much all just coursework or is there an alternative way that Strathclyde or DPLP providers in general do it? It's interesting because I think Strath is maybe a wee bit different in this regard in that essentially everything or next to everything that you submit will be in some way assessed mm -hmm. so imagine you're at work you're in your first day of your traineeship and you start getting given work and you're told you know you need to do this within a few days or within a week or and, and you have to balance your time and achieve those tasks mm -hmm. and you know as a trainee you you know probably won't be well you won't be like signing off documents yourself and and you know having those direct communications you'll be working through a, a partner or a senior associate yeah 
and you know you you would send them your work and they would send it back and say hey i think you should change this mm -hmm. essentially that's exactly how it works at strathclyde you submit your assignments you send them to your tutors and they say well done but there's you know one two three things that you should change mm -hmm. and then you can submit it officially um and and generally it's it's not the same at undergrad where you get a b c d yeah it, it's generally just um i wouldn't even say it's pass or fail it's more just like you have you know maybe not quite achieved the um what we're looking for so you know you can change this and this but it's not it's not really about um the grade it's about learning and continuously improving yourself so as i said it's it feels very much like a, a first year of a training contract it really does yeah and i suppose like we say that kind of mimics more how it's going to be in mm -hmm. practice upon being a trainee you know you're not going to get like a partner come back with your work and say i would give you 80 percent for this you know it's not they're not going to give me that they're going to say this is good this is good but perhaps change this or this is wrong or things like that. you know we, we don't get to just kind of like separate yeah. pieces of work from like really really amazing to not so good in actual practice so i think that's quite a good way like you say to prepare you for for working in practice and ultimately being a, a trainee solicitor mm -hmm. upon kind of finishing your your diploma Sorry to interrupt, but I just want to let you know that this will be a two-part series with Neil and I'll be speaking to him again towards the end of series two when he's completed his DPLP. So if there are any missed questions that you would like answered, then please get in touch with me or SULS. As always, our links are in the description below and I'll be sure to put them to him for episode two. Alternatively, if there are any burning questions you would like answered before then, again, please just let me know and I'll send it to Neil and get you a response as soon as possible. As mentioned at the start, this probably is one of the most important episodes for those who are looking to move on to a diploma after the LLB and I'm more than happy to help in any way I can. So please just let me know and I will assist to the best of my ability. Anyway, back to the podcast. I think, you know, the diploma is kind of marketed sometimes as being the kind of practical side, whereas obviously the LLB is kind of theory mm -hmm. focused and then the diploma kind of sets you up more for how it's actually going to be when you work as a trainee solicitor. Is that fair mm -hmm. to say in your experience so far? Oh, oh yeah, of, of course. Uh, when, when you sit down in a seminar uh, undergrad, you're expected to know the, the ins and outs and the detail of the law mm -hmm. and you're expected to, you know, have that discourse in terms of of very academic conversations that you're expected to engage in uh, in the diploma it, it's not the same I, I would actually say the expectation of the legal knowledge is maybe even a bit less mm -hmm. it's more about how you apply the the knowledge to the to the issue or to the to the work that you're submitting mm -hmm. and much much less about you know what i found at undergrad where you were often tasked with researching the issues that come up like 0.1% of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your fringes of, of legal issues, your nitty gritty academic problems, uh, which is very interesting. I, I'm not disregarding the value of that. But at the end of the day, that's something that if you came into practice, you would have to really work on and, you know, possibly, well, most likely go to other solicitors and ask for help with. Mm -hmm. So in the diploma, it is much more you know, here's how you submit a form to the court, here's how you do, you know, initial writs and mm -hmm. and here's how you buy and sell a house. Yeah. And, and much less about the, the deep the deep theory behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I will say is that you'll be surprised how much of your knowledge is helpful uh, in the diploma. Uh, I think students are always worried that they'll have almost that like imposter syndrome feeling when they come to the diploma. Yeah. Like they won't feel like they should be there. They'll feel like they're not ready. Maybe you haven't had a placement or something and you don't feel like you're ready for that environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 the undergrad one will certainly have prepared you for everything that you're going to come up against. Mm -hmm. Well, that's definitely good to know. I think that'll probably put a lot of people's fears at ease. And I know in the previous mm -hmm. episode, James McFarlane did mention about imposter syndrome. I think it's something that a yeah. lot of people suffer with. And I know in series one, myself and Holly Conway did a, a full episode about imposter syndrome. It's definitely an issue in the industry and, and among students generally. So see, when you compare the diploma to the LLB, how does the workload differ? How many like classes do you have in a week? Are you in like five days a week or is it just generally more intense? And, and how is the work-life balance generally as well? 
Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. And the the answer is, again, it varies. I, I believe at Edinburgh, it's very much a case of it's essentially nine to five and you're, you're sort of expected to stay in the university. At least that's what I've, I've heard. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas it, it's Strath, it, it's maybe a, a, an in-between. Um, you'll have some classes early in the morning, some classes late at night. And in between, you just really have to balance your own time. Uh, but you, you won't you won't be in classes any more than uh, at the moment. I've got about six or seven modules, and mm. each one has about a, a two hour seminar allotted to it. Mm. So in in that regard, it is more work, yes, than the undergrad where you have maybe three three seminars a week, yeah, um, and a couple of lectures. So you will be undertaking more work in that regard. What what I will say is that the the work is in some ways less stressful because you you don't have the long build up to a big assessment or a big exam like you do at the undergrads. Yeah. Uh, I I always hated that feeling of of the first couple of weeks of undergrad were were a ball. You know, you could go out, you could have fun, you could yeah. completely disregard your uni work <laughs> <laughs> and then and then catch up even in like the last few weeks you could catch up with it. Yeah. But it it was the stress of having, you know, week 5 and 6 was always an absolute nightmare and everything went completely wrong yeah uh, it's not like that on the diploma it's more every single week there's a little bit of work in it um it's it's always quite equal i i, I don't feel like the work's gotten any more intense as the weeks have gone on in fact i'd say i've gotten more used to it as time has passed mm-hmm. uh, so it's, it's more incremental yeah um, i i'd say that the the big difference is like the managing of your time, mm-hmm. you, you need to be able to diarize and plan what you're going to do yeah. because you, you can't, as you would at undergrad, you can't put things off because your work will stack up and your deadlines will come in thick and fast and you have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing for people who are looking to go onto a diploma in the next year or two to try and get into the habit of doing now. I feel like you know these are definitely skills that you can use and adapt whilst on your undergrad mm-hmm. and then that means once you get to a diploma ultimately in yeah. a couple of years time or whatever it may be you're kind of ready you're already kind of integrated in that sort of lifestyle i think that's yes. definitely something which will will benefit a lot of people so i think you know we've spoke about the academic side neil and i think people will probably want to know about the social side so you've mentioned that you do a lot of group work which i think you know it's kind of something that certain people like certain people don't like how do you kind of fall on that side and also see because it's only a one year course are people Mm -hmm. kind of less interested in in socializing and making friends because they know ultimately they're going to be gone in literally a few months time Uh, so i'll I'll go with the the group work one uh first before the the socialization because uh, both are very different from from the undergrad experience at least at least for me Uh, my experience of group work has has always been fairly fairly good uh, i i like working in a team i like learning about people and i like supporting other people on the team and working towards an end goal but i think at undergrad you sometimes had interesting groups yeah uh, i yeah i had a lot of very yeah different experiences so, <laughs> like for 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 the moot that you do in second year i had a wonderful group which uh-huh. uh, was extremely overpowered as myself and Ewan who I believe has been on the podcast as well yeah, before uh-huh. and that was a, an amazing group but then I, I won't name situations but I've had <laughs> less efficient groups I think we can all relate time. we've all had situations like that Neil don't worry <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but uh, on on the postgrad you're you're with everybody wants to be a sli- well generally everybody wants to be a solicitor mm-hmm. uh, everybody's looking for a training contract and nobody is playing games or messing around yeah because your grades are on the line your career is on the line so you you want to do well mm-hmm. and there's a genuine spirit of camaraderie in that regard mm-hmm. uh, in, in that case i think i'm lucky that i do have a wonderful group because you're with generally the same group on on uh, the strathclyde diploma all the way through it's like the same group of people and my group is yeah amazing and i'm very lucky Uh, i actually was lucky enough to be put on a group with someone i was on the undergrad with right uh, which i don't know if that was a a coincidence but it's been a nice coincidence Mm -hmm. uh, just because we already knew each other in terms of the socialization 
I think you're right. There is less of an impetus to get involved mm -hmm. because you're only there for a year. I'll, I'll also say, I, from my experience, there's a lot more people traveling in to university mm -hmm. than there are in the undergrad. You know, m most people in the undergrad live if not on campus, then in Stirling. Yeah. And, and a few of them live a wee bit further away. Mm -hmm. But once you finish class, you kind of, you need to go, you need to get your train or you need to go back home because, you know, you, you need to get your family sorted out mm -hmm. or you've got your work to get to. So generally you're dealing with a lot of more busy people um, mm -hmm. with more full, uh, more full, you know, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, that's not fair to say that everyone in the undergrad doesn't have those. They do. But I, I certainly think there's less of the student sort of lifestyle in the postgrad. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you know, that doesn't mean you can't get involved. Uh, you, you know, the you can still go and join the societies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still a very open environment. Um, but as you know, Jed, I do like to go back to Sterling and do my socialisation yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you mentioned the societies, then I was going to say, hope you've not joined Strathclyde. Yet, though. I hope you're still an SULS boy at heart. Uh, I certainly am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to hear. It's good to hear. But it's definitely interesting because I think, like you say, the, the diploma, it kind of is like, it's game time, you know, the kind of, mm -hmm. you know, you do get away with more kind of slacking during that four years of your undergrad. But once you get to a diploma, that is... The kind of bridge between university and ultimately practice and working as a trainee yeah. so you know that there definitely shouldn't be much room for you know going out three nights a week and i definitely wouldn't mm -hmm. expect you know a dedicated diploma student to be sitting in a bar three nights a week and you know absolutely getting steaming so i think that's kind of good and i'm you know as someone who doesn't plan on doing a diploma i still think it's interesting to hear and it's definitely kind of living up to my own expectation of what a kind of diploma life kind of looks like and I know there's mm -hmm. loads of people who I've spoken to recently who are looking to do a diploma and I've actually asked for their input on these questions because I feel like it's kind of unfair for me to set the questions even though mm -hmm. I don't really plan on doing it so a lot of these questions are from people who want to do a diploma and I think that this will probably end up being one of the most beneficial episodes yet because of that so I think you know going back to the LLB students who've given me these questions and helped me shape this episode is there any particular piece of advice you'd like to give to them to help them prepare for a diploma or life on the diploma, anything like that? Yeah, so, you know, I've, I've got a few pieces of advice, so I'll, I'll go through them, mm -hmm. um, you know, one after the other. The first piece of advice I would say is, it's kind of the cliche, everybody always says this about anything to do with university, but don't panic. Yeah. You, you'll come to the diploma and you will, I, well, I've written on my notes here, uh, you will be ready and you'll also be completely lost. Mm -hmm. It's it's a strange trade-off, but it, it does reflect the reality that sometimes you'll come into class and you'll feel, yeah, I, I know this, I you know, I did this on undergrad, I'm like, you know, you feel almost like an expert in it. Mm -hmm. um, but then there'll be other classes where you sit down and you go, oh no, you know, this is private client, it's trust and succession again, and you know you feel like everything's going over your head but that's the same with everybody else everyone mm -hmm. else is feeling the exact same as you mm -hmm. and that's why it's good to be in a group yeah that, that's why group working is nice because you can turn around to your team and be like is anyone else getting this and other you know someone else might be like yeah i understand it and they can explain it to you so yeah don't panic you'll be ready and you'll also be learning you know i i thought i was good at advocacy and public speaking mm -hmm. but having done like criminal litigation and stuff i have areas to improve upon and that's just part of life that's yeah. not to be unexpected the second piece of advice i'd say is if you're interested in being a commercial solicitor and this is coming from someone who is so if you are interested in like family or criminal then please feel free to disregard this advice mm -hmm. but work on your commercial awareness mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a whole other conversation about how to do that. Yeah. But it's certainly something that you want to be keeping up with. And I can give some tips about that if, if you'd like. Yeah, go for it. Okay, yeah, sure. So I, people, a lot of people think that commercial awareness is about reading the news. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. It's actually not part of that really at all. Or it's yeah. at least a very small part. Um, essentially, it's, it's about like someone saying they know a lot about football. And all they can tell you about football is the scores from the weekend. Like, yeah. that's not understanding football. That's just knowing the scores. Yeah. yeah. So my advice to get commercial awareness is understand how the commercial landscape works. Understand how businesses are funded, who their customers are, 
you know how how they operate and the things that they care about mm-hmm. and the way to do that in my opinion is mostly through podcasts and mm-hmm. um, you know there's there's great podcasts out there just type in you know business podcasts um, I, you know, I, I don't want to name any on this podcast, obviously. <laughs> Go for it, honestly, it's fine. We're okay, not, fine. I don't mind. I'm happy to plug other podcasts. We all stick together, I hope. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, of course. Uh, well, there's the Thinking Commercially podcast, um, w- which is great. And they really go into not just the news, but the underlying principles of, of commercial, you know, commercialism and economics. Mm. Uh, and as well, the FT News Briefing it is, a good, mm. is a good source of, of up-to-date information. So I, I would say get get on that, and also listening to a podcast can sometimes be nice. Yeah. Um, if you're in the car and you've got nothing else to do, and my third piece of advice, um, third and final piece of advice, is to you know really plan plan your work more. So when I started the diploma, they started talking about this strange concept to me of of time management and diarizing, um, which as people know in the undergrad. Uh, I was never fantastic at time management. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't have been bad, but I was never great at it. Yeah. Uh, but on the diploma, basically every day, I, this might sound dull to some people, but every day I wake up and I make a, a to-do list mm-hmm. and every night I take off the to-do list and I make a new one for the next day. Mm-hmm. And if please do that on the undergrad because it will make such a massive difference that mm-hmm. you'll be stunned how much work you can get done if you follow that very simple procedure Mm -hmm. it's made a massive difference to like my general standard of living as well so Mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent plan your work more yeah i definitely think that's a good piece of advice because i think it really helps structure your day i feel like you know Mm -hmm. once you get to kind of like lunchtime if you don't have uh, a to-do list it's easy to kind of get sidetracked and end up wasting a couple hours just kind of like flicking through your phone or, or doing unnecessary stuff whereas if yeah. you've got a to-do list and you know that you need to get that done by the end of the day you're going to prioritize it whereas if you kind of just go through the day willy nilly kind of going as you go you know you end up forgetting about things and it's not until the next day when something's due you're like oh my god i forgot to do that so yeah. i think it really is helpful like even like as you go through the day if something crops up just write it down and you can put it in your to-do list for the next day mm-hmm. or on another day whatever it may be because i feel like that's something i've learned as well in the undergrad obviously you know doing society stuff we've always got meetings and calls and stuff going on so it's kind of helped me prepare for working life making sure if, I've, if someone says okay you're free on this day just write it down even if you're not putting it directly in your diary just write it somewhere that you know you're going to check it because mm-hmm. there's been times where i forget about things and i go oh my god i'm so glad you mentioned that otherwise i would have forgot and not turned up on the call and stuff like that so i definitely think you know i feel like as students a lot of us like to do lists don't we it's it's you know mm-hmm. it's i think it's maybe i'm a bit geeky by saying it's quite fun i quite like having a good to do list it makes you feel motivated do you feel more motivated with a to do list neil it feels nice to take it off yeah uh, uh-huh. less nice when you're not taking it off yeah and you're like oh no <laughs> not oh, so great when you get to night time and you're like i've not even done half the stuff I was yeah. to do today. but you know that's just that's going to be the same in practice you're going to get you know you might think like mm-hmm. this task will take an hour but it could take a few hours you don't know how it's really going to go until you get it done and again that just comes yeah. down to managing your time properly and making sure that if something does kind of go over kind of like double or triple the time you thought it would then you'll have to prioritize the other tasks mm-hmm. and our time and again that we could we could probably do a full podcast neil about time management and to-do lists and making sure you get your stuff done and, and things like that and prioritizing and all that good stuff i feel like that's really critical for law students and ultimately being a, a trainee solicitor after you do your diploma as well so i think we've probably discussed enough about the diploma and as i've mentioned this is going to be a two-part series where we speak to neil now as he's kind of halfway through his first semester on his diploma and then we're going to speak to him again once he's, he's finished his diploma next year and it's gonna be really interesting to see how your experience is different after you know going through it completely but we'll find out more about your post diploma plans upon graduation and finishing your diploma neil but roughly right now what are your post diploma plans once you complete your diploma at strathclyde yeah, well, hopefully when I come back on the podcast, I'll still be saying good things yeah. in six months' time or so. So uh, I look forward to listening to, to both podcasts yeah. as well, actually, and, and comparing the difference. Uh-huh. Um, it would have been interesting for me to do a podcast uh, my first year of undergrad compared, yeah. compared to the fourth year. Definitely. Uh, especially if it was recorded around March time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, actually, that's a good point to say is life life changes quickly mm-hmm. and suddenly i i think i saw a massive change in in myself between 
um, you know, the start and end of honors. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it was it was very chalk and cheese. I felt like a very different person after it. Yeah. So it, it's hard to predict sometimes where you'll be, and it, it's nice to have a bit of flexibility. But you know, in saying that, I I am one of the lucky people to have a traineeship ready for for next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I will have done the you know the classic school uni post grad traineeship in in one go which mm-hmm. I, you know i'm very lucky to have been able to do but i'm not someone who who wants to stop so i don't see that as an end goal in any regard i i'm only you know uh, 22 years old and i had to think there for a second <laughs> <I am. laughs> it gets to that stage uh and you know it's it's gonna be it's a long process for me and one of the things i am interested in doing uh, is is doing a master's mm-hmm. uh i've i've actually been looking at master's courses um you know so, some of them in england because they they do uh, distance learning courses yeah uh because you know i, I kind of think that'll that'll become more normal is distance learning yeah so yeah a master's and and hopefully looking into uh, international law mm-hmm. because it, it undergrad that was also what i did my dissertation on mm-hmm. and it, it did take my fancy quite a lot yeah. so yeah i'll keep my options open but I, I think the the key takeaway is, is onwards and upwards really and and staying flexible. Yeah. I think, you know, doing a masters is something that probably appeals to a lot of people. So once we do episode two, I'll be interested to hear kind of if that's still mm-hmm. firmly in your plans. Like you say, life moves quickly. Who knows? I change my career plans every two weeks. I'm sure people <laughs> will relate to that as well. So who knows where Neil will be in kind of six months time, like you say, and it'll be really interesting to kind of compare the two episodes upon, you know, once we finally once we finally get it out and you're finished yeah. your diploma. So yeah, I suppose that wraps us up, Neil. I just want to say thanks a lot mm-hmm. for coming back on. It's been great to chat again. Obviously we miss you at SULS, so it's nice to, to catch up and we really do all as a committee and a society in general wish you well for the rest of your diploma and i know for me personally i'm really looking forward to to speaking to you again once you graduate next year awesome and uh, don't worry you've not you've not got rid of me quite yet i'll <laughs> i'll be back <laughs> <laughs> glad to hear Cheers. take care neil <laughs> thank you very much thank you for listening to the sterling university law society podcast be sure to check out our website and social media pages through the links below